Today I want to introduce you guys to something called the quadratic algorithm. In general, an algorithm is just a list of steps that you can use to solve a problem. And so this is going to be a list of steps that we can use to solve quadratic equations. Um, I'll give you a simple quadratic equation that we can start out with. Let's say we have this equation. x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. You may have already learned to solve this. You probably already have. But if you haven't, the way that you can do this the easiest is to use factoring. What we're trying to find is all the numbers that we can put in for x that make this equation true. So if we can factor, it will help us. Um, what we're looking for when we're factoring is I want to rewrite this as x plus or minus something times another x plus or minus something equals zero. So my two numbers out here have to multiply together to get this two. And then when I add up, I'll get two middle terms that both have an x in it. And so those two terms have to add up to give me positive 3x. So I need two numbers that multiply to positive 2 and add to positive 3. So the numbers 2 and 1 will do that. x plus 2 times x plus 1. If you multiply this out, you foil it um, or distribute it, then you will get back up to here because 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 plus 1 is 3. Once you get this, then since you have one number times another number equals zero, that means that one of these two numbers has to be zero. So just set both of them equal to zero and solve. And remember, we're looking for all the x's that make this equation true. So if an equation makes this true or this true, then it definitely makes this multiplication zero, which makes this top line true. So now just solve for x in both of these. And those are the two solutions to that problem. Um, I'll give you another example. Let's say we've got this one this time. So now I need two numbers that multiply to positive 2 and add to negative 3. If you think about it for a second, um, negative 2 and negative 1 will do this. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. So I know that works. And now x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. So in this case, x would have to equal 2. And in this case, x would have to equal 1. And there's a nice geometric interpretation of this. Since we're already familiar with the graphs, we know about parabolas. Um, we can think about what this means, and it, it's going to be helpful for us. So let's do that. I know I've got a parabola because this is a quadratic equation on the left-hand side here. So let's say it looks something like this. And what I'm trying to figure out is when... This whole left side, which is, I can think of it as a y value on this graph, when that y value is equal to zero. So what I'm really looking for is where is this happening and where is this happening? And um, what we did when we solved this, we did two different problems. So for this one, when we solved it, we got x equals 2 and x equals 1. So what that would mean is that our graph crosses the x-axis at x equals 1, and it crosses or hits at x equals 2. Okay. We could get a much more complicated quadratic piece on this left-hand side. So let me give you an example of what we could have that's a little complicated. If I get this, then 
I just look at that and I think, um, how am I supposed to come up with a way to factor it so that when you multiply it out, you really do get back up to here? Uh, it's a lot harder to do that with this than with that one. So what people usually do, and if you've learned um, how to solve quadratic equations before, I'm sure you've learned this, people develop something called the quadratic, al uh, not the algorithm, quadratic equation, the quadratic formula. And that formula will allow you to solve this quickly. But um, after several hundred years of, of people talking about this and teaching this kind of method, um, there's been a really recent breakthrough in how people look at this and teach it. And I'm going to teach you guys to do it that way. It's helpful to do it this other way because it's much more intuitive. You can understand what's happening. It makes more sense. To get the quadratic formula, um, you've got to do completing the square and some other things all together at the same time. And it, it's just not easy to understand why things work the way they do. I could teach you to do it, but it, it's just not very intuitive. So this other way of doing it um, assumes that we can actually factor this. And it, it's true, you, you can factor this. No matter what these numbers are, you can always factor. So here's how it goes. In general, we would have something like this. So I'm going to write it down like this because um, we can have any number here, any number here, any number here. So for this example, a is 5, b is negative 7, and c is 13. And what we're assuming is that we can factor this out. Before we factor it out um, for our algorithm, the first thing that we're going to do is divide by this a. That will make it easier for us. So if I divide by a, I just get x squared. And then my coefficient here is b over a. And here's c over a. 0 divided by a is just a. Um, and I want to rewrite this as x minus something times x minus something. So if I can write it like this, which I'm telling you that we can do, then this means x has to be equal to r, and this means x has to be equal to s. So what we're looking for is these two answers to this original equation. Um, I want to mention how these are different from what we did up here. It is slightly different. So here, we're subtracting off r and s. Here, so r and s is what we're going to be looking for. Over here, the two numbers that we were looking for were the numbers that multiplied to positive 2 and added to negative 3. And here, those were negative 2 and negative 1. Those were the numbers that we found. But the actual solutions to the problem, the x-intercepts, which we're going to be looking for here, the r and the s, those are just the 2 and the 1. So uh, if you're used to factoring, we're going to think of this slightly different because this is going to take us to the answer a little more quickly. All right, now let's think about what we know about this R and this S. Um, we know <clears throat> that when we multiply the, the negative R times the negative S, we should get this number. I'm going to rewrite this B over A as just capital B. And then I'm going to rewrite the, cap the little c over little a as capital C. So after we've done our first step, step in our algorithm, we've divided by the number out in front. So up here, we divide by 5. Then we have something that looks like this. And then I'm wanting to rewrite this again as x minus r times x minus s. 
So what we know is that negative R times negative S has to equal C. But negative R times negative S is positive R times positive S. So one thing that we need is R times S equals C. And then the other thing that we need is we need negative R minus S to equal positive B. But I'm going to rewrite this part. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 and think of it as R plus S is negative B. So when I add R and S, I've got to get the negative of this number. There's, there's a nice insight that comes from this equation. If I divide both sides by 2, then all of a sudden this side has some nice geometric significance. Um, R plus S divided by 2 is just the average of R and S. So this number I'm going to think of as the average of my two solutions. But geometrically what this means is that my parabola looks something like this. And let's say this is this is our R, and this is our S. Then the average of these two is just right in the middle. And if I want to get R and I start at the average, then I just take that number and I add a little distance to it. And if I want to get S, then I start at the average and I subtract the same distance. So we're going to take advantage of this. We're going to call this distance Z. And the distance is the same if we start at the average and go to the right, or start at the average and go to the left. So now what this gives us is that R, we can write as the average plus Z, but the average we know is just negative B over 2. And the S we can write as the average minus C, so I'll go ahead and substitute in the negative B over 2 for the average there. And this is a very convenient way to write these two. It doesn't look like it yet, but here's what happens. Remember, we know that R times S has to be equal to C. So now, if I multiply R times S, I've got, I'll go ahead and write it out. I've got this average plus Z times the average minus Z. And when you learn factoring, you should have learned the difference of squares. This is now a difference of squares. That's what makes it so convenient. So I know that when I multiply this out, um, I'm going to get this minus z squared. R times s has to be equal to c. So I get this equals C. Joy. No, you cannot. Stay over there. So once we get down to here, um, negative B over 2 times negative B over 2 is the same as positive B over 2 times positive B over 2. Or I can think of this again as the average. So we end up with b over 2 squared minus c squared equals c. And we know the numbers b and c, so this gives us a way to solve for z. So this is what we're going to use. 
this is our algorithm. We first divide by whatever number it was out in front of x squared, we divide by it, and then we use the b and the c that are left over to solve for z here. So in the next video, uh, we're just gonna look at some specific examples of how to work through that algorithm. We'll start simple and then we'll get more complicated. Um, so hopefully you'll feel pretty comfortable with that. And if you already know how to do the quadratic formula, you feel free to compare going back and forth. But I really want you to take some time to think about why this works. Because if you can understand why it works, um, it's going to help you to build on top of that knowledge to do more complicated.